Hey everyone, Allison here from Ladner Village Arts and Crafts and we are up to day number 10 on the 12 days of Stitchmas. So let's see what is behind window number 10. It is a stocking. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at the pieces that are in this. got the outline of the stocking, the inside part where you're stitching. We've got the um, top which also has some stitching and then uh, a little hanger piece. Okay so like before I'm gonna gather my supplies and then we will make something. Everything is cut and I've gone ahead and already adhered my background. So I've chosen this white snowflake on craft for the background. And for my stocking, I have a solid gold one for the back. And then I've cut the um, stocking part out of a dark blue and then the top out of white. And then I cut the little hanger out of um, gold. Okay, and um, <clears throat> and then I thought it would be kind of nice to have it on another piece. And typically I've just been doing white cardstock, but I thought maybe it would be fun to do something different. So I actually cut a piece of the light blue in this scalloped or pinked circle. So this is a set of nested waffle or nested dies from Waffle Flower, and they have this lovely like stitched detail in them and you could stitch around that I don't think I'll do that tonight but um I just kind of thought it would it would mimic the stitching that's on the die and give it a nice a nice a different look I believe these are still available in the store if you are interested um and I cut them out of two sizes because I wasn't really sure what would be best looking at it now I realize that's too small this is going to be a better fit and then I have just a little sentiment from that picket fence um, stamp set that says Santa, please stop here, which I thought would be kind of perfect. Just right there. And then I can have this sort of hanging above it. Okay, so I'm going to get this stamped and then we can uh, adhere it to the card base. Question is, do I pop it up? Or do I leave it flat and then pop up the stocking? Or do I leave everything flat? I mean, there's plenty of options. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, I think I will pop this up. I'm going to use my um, roll of foam adhesive. And we do sell these in the store as well. I think our white is running low, but um, we can always bring more in. We've got black, which I actually quite like the black. Even if I'm not making a dark card, I, I kind of like having that black foam adhesive. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I'm just strange, but anyways. So I'm just going to pop this on my card base. And then that's all ready for my stocking. All right, so with the gold, I think I will um, use gold on the blue and then I will, I think there's a, that, um, yes, this blue sort of variegated one. I'll use that on the white part of the stocking. So let's find my gold. I, I started using the magnetic needle keeper because or needle minder or whatever they call it because why not? I don't have a lot of gold left on here but it might be enough to do at least one of these sections. Okay so we've done this before right? Come up through the bottom Tape it down. Okay. 
And then this is just a very simple starburst pattern. A lot of these dies are having this very simple starburst pattern. Which means that once you have done one, <laughs> you get the hang of it. Just try not to twist my threads there. Um, yeah, it makes it really easy and fast to do all the rest. It's just up through that center. Trying not to lose my threads off my needle. Just make this and then I'll have to re um, reload my needle with gold thread. Yep, there we go. Okay. We will take this piece down and trim off that end. And then I'll do the other one off camera. And then this is just a very simple straight up and down. So I'll do that one off camera too with the gold thread and I'll be back. Stitching is all done and um, I had to take a look because I was curious as to what this little piece was, is. Uh, Spellbinders always creates very intricate dies but they never you know throw things in there that don't belong so the fact that this cut out at the same time as the stocking hanger got me wondering. Um, it shows it placed over top like that so I think it's supposed to give maybe like a 3d effect and maybe you could put a different color there I'm not totally sure I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research online and find out what's going on there but for now we will just glue it together and then And then just just trust trust the process as well as they say, trust spellbinders. Okay, here's the finished stitching on the bottom of the stocking, so the toe and the heel. Um, you could do a running stitch around there. I'm not going to do that tonight. Uh, and then this is the top with the variegated blue. I think that looks really stunning, actually. So we're going to put this on top of the gold and then pop it up on our card. So I think I will just use some liquid adhesive. I might. Yeah, I might pop this one down first and then see um, how it all lines up before I attach the topper and the, the little guy. In fact, I might need to attach him first because he probably should go behind the top bit. So now the fascinating part of watching me take off pop top back. Okay, let's bring my card in. I kind of want to have this on an angle. Yes, this is definitely going to overhang, and I think I'm going to need double height pop dots at some, some places. So I think probably along the top here, we're gonna need some double height. Let's just check that. Yeah. So it's very simple to create all sorts of height variances with pop dots. This is one way. So I've got my pop dots down there, I took off the backing and I'm just gonna stack another pop top on, on top. 
feel like I'm saying that incorrectly. You ever have that where you just, something sounds wrong? Okay, and then this middle bit, we'll just glue flat. So we'll just get some liquid glue on that. And then we've got to figure out, no, I guess this, there is no way I'm going to be able to fit double height, teeny tiny little pop dots on that. So we're going to have to figure out what we're doing there. Okay, let's just get a, some blocks on that for a minute. And figure out how to hang this. What I could do is glue the back, the, the little dot bit. Oops. Oh, there's a pop dot there. Oh, perfect. Aha. I can tuck it in there. Okay. Emergency pop dot ectomy. I'm just going to hold that while I reattach my double height pop dot. Try and sandwich it. No, that didn't work. I'm trying to sandwich it in with the pop dot. I think I need to sort of lay the card upside down and let it dry. So we're just going to let that dry for a minute. Be back. Let's see how we're doing. It's only been a couple of minutes. Yeah. That worked. Okay, and it's not hanging over the top of the card, so it'll slip in and out of an envelope just fine. I probably could have moved the whole thing down. Live and learn. We could add something else down there, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. Let's think about gems. So I don't have that many of the gems from the kit. I could put some of these um, in the, the toe and the heel. Or we could look at these pearls. That might be might be a better way to go. So let's get see the these ones here have this sort of golden iridescent. I don't know if the camera's catching that up, catch catching that. Goodness, I'm having problems talking today. the toe and the heel and then we can add some into some of our snowflake centers as well not all of them I think that would be a little bit too much I mean I do like some bling but I'm not covering every single snowflake center with a pearl And I'm trying to vary the sizes because that makes it interesting. And then we'll put some on here as well. go. Okay, I'm going to call that one done. Thanks for joining me. This is day number 10. So we've only got two more days to go. Come on back tomorrow for day number 11. Thanks. Bye.